Thank you for joining us today for an interview with Jason Gillum, founder of 2D Robotics, a company located in Waterloo. Jason, tell us how you started 2D Robotics. Pretty early, uh, in, well after UW, I became interested in entrepreneurial stuff. The community is great for fostering entrepreneurship. Uh, and so, uh, working with the co-op uh, program here, I was able to um, get involved in some um, entrepreneurial mentorship and then ultimately uh, graduated and started the, started the company. Many startups begin in a garage. Is that a similar story for to do Robotics? Yeah, so my, my friend Cam, I, uh, the company started at, uh, at his house uh, when I was living in the, the basement of his house and uh, we had, uh, had the, the bedroom and the, uh, the 2G Robotics office and then the garage for whenever I needed to uh, get a bit of work done. At what point did you know that you needed to move out and get an office? Once we started getting uh, some, some employees and having uh, a, f a few more people involved in the company, that's when I moved it from uh, the basement apartment to, a, uh, to a, a shop space. When did you know that you wanted to start a company? The first company that, that I, I had was something my, my brothers and I, my brother and I started out with, which was, uh, we called it uh, Lawn Barbers. It was a, a grass cutting company, and uh, we basically cut grass in the summers and for, for a lot of uh, people in the neighborhood. How do you make that decision whether to take that great job at a company versus starting a company yourself? I have no idea. I, it, it takes Looking back, it's the sort of thing where there's some days where you're like, man, I, I could have had a, an easy life. And, and that's, I, I think, the, the real difference is I didn't, that's not what I wanted. I, I wanted something where I was putting my own touch on, on the world and my own, um, my own imprint on what's going on. And if I, if I can make a lot of money doing that, that that's great too. What's 2G Robotics about? Uh, 2G Robotics is a company that uh, develops technologies to help people to do inspections underwater, to be able to get information from underwater that, that is challenging with, um, given the, the operating environment that they're working in. Do you have a laser scanner? Yeah, we've developed a, an underwater laser scanner and it uh, will, will take fine precision measurements of all sorts of underwater defects. So anything from a, a dam uh, face to a bridge piling, um, offshore oil uh, platforms and offshore oil infrastructure that's, that's under the water, even uh, scientific things such as uh, coral reefs uh, and, um, and archaeological artifacts. How did you get involved in this underwater inspection? Well, I've always been into underwater technology, underwater, uh, underwater biology, marine biology was one thing I was thinking of getting into coming to school. Uh, eventually I ended up coming to, to UW uh, in the, the engineering program here and then became interested in robotics and brought those two uh, interests together. Uh, created the, the underwater technology team here at UW. I uh, was able to compete in some mate ROV competitions and uh, that really helped me get, get better in terms of my technical skills and then the, the business resources that are, are in town have helped me to take those technical skills and turn them into a business reality. How did you come up with the concept of the laser scanner for underwater inspection? There, there have been a lot of uh, underwater laser scanners developed in laboratories and in, in lab type environments. And so we took the knowledge that was developed there and built on that to be able to create something that was commercially viable. One of the big differences between our system and, and all systems that preceded us is the ability to calibrate the system in the lab for being able to then take it out into the uh, environment and not needing calibration right immediately after you've installed the system. Why did you feel that the market needed this product? Because the market is based from, from municipalities and offshore oil people uh, writing the spec and then the contractors will come in and do the work. The people writing the spec don't always understand or know all of the technologies that are available to them. And so people had requested underwater laser scanners but there wasn't a commercially viable system out there. Wait, what's involved in this uh, laser scanner? Yeah, so we the, the laser scanner is able to be deployed by a variety of different systems. It can either be deployed by a scuba diver or a commercial diver that takes it down to whatever it is that they're wanting to look at. There are also robotic vehicles that our sensor can get mounted to uh, to be able to then deploy it. Uh, once it's down there, uh, we have a motor 
inside the scanner itself that will then turn the head of the scanner um, and capture a bunch of adjacent profiles of, of points of that scanner to be able to build up a, a 3D, the, the 3D point cloud or 3D model of whatever it is that we're looking at. Uh, we can take the scanner down to about a 350 meter depth and uh, we, we can scan things up to, uh, up to 3 meters. Ideally, you want to be kind of close, but uh, we can see things up to a 3 meter range. What are some of the interesting projects that people are looking to use the laser scanner for? Scanning of the coral reefs are, are one of the interesting things where people can go down, scan a coral reef, and then go back a, a year later and again understand exactly how much growth or decay has, has occurred at that location. Uh, people can also go down and inspect uh, ship propellers. So if people are interested in taking our scanner down, mounting it to the underside of a ship, and when a ship pulls into uh, to port, usually there's about an eight hour window before it heads back out again. Um, what we'll be able to do is provide them a complete 3D model of what their propeller looks like so that they can, um, from that, take any sorts of analysis that they need. There's also a, a really interesting project coming up for us where uh, some scientists are looking to take it to Antarctica, where they're looking to scan some microbial growth. So some of the oldest fossils on Earth are of these um, microbial growths, and there are similar growths currently going on in lakes down in Antarctica. And so they're going to drill a, a, a three meter diameter hole six meters down through the six meter thick ice to be able to put our sensor in with the diver. And uh, then we're going to be able to provide them 3D models of this that they can then create uh, a replica of and, and have it in a museum. What are some of the advantages and disadvantages in working in this particular market? I like this market because it's very unique. It's, it's something that people use every day but they don't realize it. So every time you turn on your, your tap, there's a lot of infrastructure that's bought, brought that water to you and then it goes down the drain and there's a lot of infrastructure that takes it away and people take that for granted. So it's pretty interesting to be able to, to be part of the, the network of people that, that supports uh, that part of the world continuing to operate. Um, plus you get to be involved in, in a lot of the interesting projects. I love being out on the water, being out on boats and being involved in, in cool stuff. How is the laser scanner uh, better for underwater inspections than other methods? So the main techniques that get used currently for underwater inspection are video and sonar. Uh, with video, you're able to just get a picture of what's going on down there. Now, it's very good at very quickly getting a, a picture, but it doesn't give you the measurement information that, you, uh, that an engineer would be able to use to assess their asset. Something like sonar. Sonar is able to give you measurement information, but it just physically won't give you the resolution that something like the laser scanner can provide. So we're able to get very high precision measurements. How did you go about uh, finding funding for 2D robotics? So there's a couple different ways that I've uh, received funding for, for the company. Some is through uh, friends and family loan, um, there's some personal debt, and there are also a number of uh, government programs that I was able to connect through, uh, through the Accelerator Center and, and Community Tech. And through those programs, was able to continue funding my uh, the R&D of the laser scanner and, and bring it to a commercially viable system. Do you look for clients yourself? Do you go out there and try and find, for example, researchers or municipalities who would be interested in your technology? Or is it more they come to you? There's, there's two ways that we've um, gone about in attracting potential customers. Uh, first is through cold calling and just getting out there and contacting people and saying, hey, we have something that you might be interested in. Uh, and we usually get a pretty good success rate with that. Uh, we also have our website, which is one way people can find information about, out about us and then contact us. Uh, we also will attend trade shows. Is mentorship important to a startup? Extraordinary. There are so many things that you can, can glean from books that you can start to understand, but there are so many pieces of information out there. You really need to have a number of mentors and and be able to use bits and pieces from all of them to be able to, to sort of coalesce how it is that you want your business to be. Do you have a favorite site online? Yeah, it's my, my CRM. That's my favorite site online. <laughs> a, a CRM is a customer relationship management system. Uh, I use that on an online customer relationship management um, system, which allows me to understand where uh, I am in the sales process with each of my various customers and what the next stages are for me to work 
uh, each customer towards a sale. What gets you up in the morning? What keeps you energized? The interest that people have in seeing what you've come up with and, and understanding how they can apply it to problems that they haven't been able to solve before. That's, that's actually really exciting for me when I'm able to do that. What are the three characteristics that you have that are working in your favor? Um, ambitious, uh, lots of good people around me, and a little bit crazy. Could you recommend a book that an entrepreneur should read? There are so many different books for different stages. So uh, some of the Jeffrey Gittimer books, uh, when you're getting into the sales and, and that sort of side of things, because that's the stage I'm at, that's what's top of mind. But even the, the Mark Burnett book, um, Jump In, that I read a while back, and, and that's, that was some of the, the motivation to, to get me going now. I mean, that always needs to be tempered with some, some books about, about um, the basics of entrepreneurship and, and the, the technical skills that you need. Would you consider yourself a geek or a nerd? Um, I'm a bit of a, a, bit of a mix. Um, I, I certainly have a decent balance of, of both. I, I hope, at least, I can certainly talk geek with the, uh, with the best of them. But uh, I can also uh, relate to, to people working offshore and, and working, um, working in a variety of environments, and that's important for this job. What has been the most rewarding to you so far? And when people that I've looked up to in the industry over the years, as I've been aware of the industry for a long time, start to get to know you and start to get to know what you have accomplished and feel that there's some value there, that's, that's really exciting. What's the startup culture like at 2G Robotics? We're pretty relaxed there. Um, this, this I wore for the interview. <laughs> I mean, uh, typically I'll, I'll come in with jeans and, and sandals, and that's, uh, that's the general, uh, general attire there. Everyone really pulls together to be able to create what it is that we want to create. If there's a problem, we'll all pitch in to come up with solutions, whether it be a technical problem, a business problem, or whatever other problems that, uh, that we encounter. Is a healthy lifestyle important to you? Definitely, definitely. Um, doesn't mean I live a healthy lifestyle. Uh, I, I wish that I got to the gym more. I wish that I got uh, home a little earlier so I could make myself a better dinner sometimes. But um, it's one of these things that, that you, you have your priorities. It depends what your priority is at the time. And, and right now my priority is, is making sure that the company is healthy and uh, I'll worry about myself a little later. Are you big on social media? No. No, I have a Facebook account. Uh, I, I hardly ever use it. I have a LinkedIn account that somebody convinced me to get the other day, um, <laughs> but I have no idea if I'm ever gonna use that. Um, people need to talk with each other a little bit more in general. What are some of your wishes for the world? Um, I would like for there to be snow, make sure we have snow in the world forever so we can keep skiing. I wish that um, we, we have a bit of a food issue right now in the world, and so that's a big challenge that really needs to get solved. And so uh, uh, I'm sure that there are a lot, of, a lot of people working on that. What advice would you give to aspiring entrepreneurs? Yeah, I, I would suggest that people starting out uh, really get a lot of uh, information about what it is that they're looking for. Talk to a lot of people. Before spending any money, there's a lot of resources that are out there that you can go to, that you can get information from, and build yourself a really solid foundation from which you would then start out. Thank you for joining us today, Jason, and telling us more about 2G Robotics. You're welcome.